What's up, everyone? Today we are going to talk about this bar graph in L17. There is a lot of data in this chart, isn't there? Later, I will show you how not to report those less important figures one by one. But let's start with the introductory paragraph, which should be a paraphrase of this text. The chart below gives information about how families in one country spend their weekly income in 1968 and in 2018. As I always say, don't try to change individual words. Don't try to change families, countries, spend weekly and income. There are no better alternatives. Let's see if we can get some inspiration from the title. So the title says, Average Weekly Spending by Families. This means that the figures are averages. They added up the expenditures in various categories and divided the totals by the number of weeks and the number of families. Therefore, we can replace families with the average family. The bar graph presents data on how the average family in one particular country spent their weekly income in 1968 and 2018. The average family means that these numbers are per family numbers. Here's another example. The average American generates about 19 tons of carbon dioxide a year. This number is the total carbon dioxide produced by that country divided by the number of people in that country. It's a per person number for the country. I hope I've explained well when the average something can be used. This is a very good rewrite of the original. By using the average family, we've demonstrated a strong ability to use accurate language to describe the figures in this chart. I also changed GIF's information about to present data on and added the word particular. The introductory paragraph is done. Now let's move on to the overview paragraph. Here's a bad way to write it. Overall, while spending on housing, transport, and leisure increased, household goods remained unchanged and the remaining categories decreased. Do you really want to list categories like this? Increases and decreases mean that they changed, right? And as you can see, in most categories, the changes are very significant. So how about we simply say that the way families spend their income had changed significantly by 2018 compared with 1968. Please note that here I used the past perfect, had changed. The past perfect is often used with by. If you want to use the past simple changed, you need to change by to in. The way families spend their income changed significantly in 2018. This sentence is summarizing the trends, right? I will also talk about the biggest categories in this paragraph. As you can see, in 1968, food was the single biggest category. However, it was overtaken by housing and leisure. So we can say that most notably, leisure and housing had overtaken food as the largest areas of expenditure. This sentence not only tells readers that leisure and housing had become the biggest categories by 2018, but also tells that food was the biggest category in 1968. This is the entire overview paragraph. Now let's move on to details paragraphs. So how should we group the categories? I think this should be easy if you've written a good overview. So in the overview, we said that these are the three biggest categories. So we can group them into details paragraph 1. And in details paragraph 2, we talk about the smaller categories. Let's start with food. It was the biggest category in 1968. So we can say that in 1968, families spent more on food than on anything else. Or families spent most on food. Both are good. However, it is incorrect to say that most expenditure was on food. This is because most as an adjective means more than half, more than 50%. The number has to be greater than 50%. As you can see, even though spending on food was higher than on any other spending, it's smaller than 50%. So it's incorrect to say that most expenditure was on food. 
Most as an adverb, though, rarely means more than fifty percent of something. Usually, it means more than anything else. So we can certainly say that families spend most on food. Here, most is an adverb. Now let's add the data, accounting for sixty-five percent of their weekly income. Please don't say something like accounting for thirty-five percent of total expenses or total expenditure. If you add up all these expenses, it's actually smaller than a hundred percent. That is to say, families didn't spend all their weekly income. So don't change the original wording. Food accounted for thirty-five percent of weekly income, not total expenses. Then I will describe the decrease. While in 2018, this figure decreased by almost half to around 17 percent. Now, housing and leisure. I'm not going to say in comparison, spending on housing and leisure increased from A to B percent and C to D percent respectively. And when reporting the remaining categories, I'm also not going to say that expenditures on fuel and power, clothing and footwear, and personal goods decreased from E to F percent, G to H percent, and X to Y percent, respectively. I don't think it's a good way to report data. This is using the same grammatical construction again and again, and using respectively again and again. Most importantly, it's reporting every single piece of data rather than selecting and reporting the main features. To avoid reporting every single piece of data, we need to learn how to make broad comments. Ask yourself, what do these figures have in common? As you can see, in 1968, the percentages in the remaining categories are all lower than 10. So we can say that in 1968, the proportion of weekly income spent in any of the other categories never exceeded 10 percent. This is the kind of broad comment we should make. But be careful! Don't write something like this. In 1969, the proportion of weekly income spent on the remaining categories never exceeded 10 percent. This may be read as the remaining categories together accounting for 10 percent or less. We can remove this ambiguity by using any of the other categories, or any other category, or any of the remaining categories. All these three versions are clear. Here's another example. This chart is about coffee and tea buying and drinking habits in five cities in Australia. As you can see, in this category, the proportion in each city is lower than 45 percent. The right way to say this is. The proportion of people who bought fresh coffee was never as high as 45 percent in any of the five cities. We say in any of the five cities. We don't say in the five cities because it could be read as the percentage of people in the five cities who bought fresh coffee together was lower than 45. Now let's go back to this chart: housing and leisure. I think the most important feature of these two categories is that in 2018 they became the biggest categories. However, leisure and housing both showed a significant increase, replacing food as the largest expenses with approximately 22 percent and 19 percent of family income, respectively. Now, details paragraph two: the remaining five categories. We don't need to report their figures in 1968 because in the last paragraph we've already said that they never exceeded 10 percent. I would start this paragraph with transport. At the end of the last paragraph, we said that leisure and housing increased. Here we can use also to make these two paragraphs coherent. Expenditure on transport also rose to almost 15 percent of weekly income. The comma is necessary. We shouldn't omit it. Without the comma, also not only modifies rose, but also modifies the number fifteen percent. This would mean that leisure and housing also increased to almost fifteen percent. But leisure and housing didn't increase to fifteen percent, but to twenty-two and nineteen percent respectively. With the comma, also only modifies rose. What transport, housing, and leisure have in common is that they all rose, so we definitely need the comma. Now I'm gonna move on to household goods. Whilst money spent on household goods remained at roughly seven percent, 
For the remaining three categories, again, I'm not going to report their figures one by one. I'm gonna make a broad comment. The figures are all under five percent. Clothing and footwear, fuel and power, and personal goods all saw a reduction to no more than five percent of weekly income. Here's the entire essay. It's 161 words in total. When a chart has a lot of data, the key to avoiding writing too many words is not to report every single piece of data. Instead, we should try to make broad comments on less important data. That's all for this video, and here's a playlist of videos that focus on selecting and grouping data. I promise, if you watch all of them, you will be much better at dealing with data when there is a lot. Be sure to check it out. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.